So now we have the structure of periodontal ligament. Mm. So we have basically two categories. One is cells and the next one is extracellular substance. So under cells we have basically five categories. The first category is synthetic cells. The cells which produces other cells. That is osteoblast which produces bone, fibroblast, cementoblast. The second one is resorptive cell, so which destruct the cell, osteoclast, fibroblast and cementoclast, which destructs bone, fibers and cementum. Third one is progenitor cell, then epithelial rest of molasses and defense cell. So the basic defense cell, mast cell, macrophages and eosinophils. So Synthet synthetic cells we have osteoblast, fibroblast, cementoblast, resorptive cell, the destructive cells, osteoclast, fibroclast, and cementoclast. This is blast means create, clast means destruct. Progenitor cell, epithelial rest of molasses. We had seen when the sheath was disrupted, the Hardwick's epithelial root sheath, once it loses its continuity. The remnants will be on the periodontal ligament as epithelial rest of molasses and the common defense cell. And in extracellular substances, that means the main bulk of substances, we have fibers and ground substances. In fibers, we have collagen fibers and oxytalent fibers. In ground substances, we have glycosaminoglycans and glycoproteins. Now we'll move on to the our principal or the chief component of cells sector that is synthetic cell that is fibroblast which is the architect which is a builder which is a caretaker of periodontal ligament which is very predominant in the periodontal ligament so basically it originates uh, from cemental surface and also from Alveolar bone surface. Cemental surface, it originates from ectomesenchyme of investing layer of dental papilla and dental follicle from the cemental surface. Whereas the alveolar bone side, it is originated from perivascular mesenchyme. So both sides, it originates towards the cemental surface. It is originates from the ectomesenchyme we have seen in dental papilla and dental follicle. And in alveolar bone side, it is originated from perivascular mesenchyme so these cells which is uh, oriented with their long axis parallel to the direction of collagen fibers so how the collagen fibers are oriented so it just follows the long axis parallel to the collagen fibers and which is aligned along between collagen fibers and appearance governed by the surrounding matrix so these fibroblasts of periodontal ligament generate an organizational pattern as they have the ability to both synthesize and shape the proteins of extracellular matrix so it has both the properties that is the ability to synthesize and shape the proteins of extracellular matrix so these proteins also it can shape and it can synthesize uh, synthesize the other elements also so the certain fibers or the fibrils form bundles to get inserted into tooth and bone which is known as sharp piece fibers this is very important sharp piece fibers commonly asked short note so what is sharp piece fibers so certain fibers or fibrils in fibroblast it gets bundled or it gets forms in a bundle and get inserted into tooth and bone so once it is embedded in the wall of alveolus or tooth these fibers calcify to certain degree which fibers sharpies fibers calcify to certain degree and are associated with an abundance of non collagenous proteins found in the bone so these proteins are known as osteopontin and bone sialoprotein 
So these are associated with Sharpie's fibers. So what are the functions of um, fibroblast? Okay, not osteoblast. Functions of fibroblast. So the first function is to synthesize collagen. First is the collagen, synthesize, then synthesize fibrils, organize fibrous network and generate force on tooth eruption, produce extracellular matrix of periodontal ligament, which has capacity to give rise to cementoblast and osteoblast. So fibroblast can give rise to osteoblast and also cementoblast. It maintains a normal width of periodontal ligament, which synthesize and shape the proteins of extracellular matrix I mentioned earlier, in which collagen fibers form bundles and insert into the bone or tooth as Sharpie's fibers. So it can shape the extracellular matrix proteins. So it regulates collagen turnover by phagocytosis, phagocytosing the old collagen fibers. Now we'll move on to the second synthetic cell that is osteoblast. These cells uh, covers the periodontal surface of alveolar bone which line the tooth socket and are cuboidal in shape with prominent round nucleus at the basal end of the cell which has rough endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria and vesicles which are very active and abundant in osteoblast. Microfilaments are prominent beneath the cell membrane and this cell contacts one another through desmosomes and tight junction. What about cementoblast? Cementoblast they lines the surface of cementum uh, which are cuboidal with large vesicle nucleus with one or more nucleoli and all the organelles required for protein synthesis and secretion are present in cementoblast. There are two types of uh, cells that is cells with uh, cytoplasmic process and cells without cytoplasmic process. So cells actively depositing cellular cementum exhibit the cytoplasmic processes and basophilic cytoplasm but whereas a cellular cementum producing cells with which doesn't have prominent cytoplasmic processes. So th these are the two types of Mm, cells which you see in cemento, cementoblast type cells okay now let's see the uh, resorptive cell those are osteoclast fibroclast and cementoclast so next we have resorptive cells resorptive cells are nothing but which uh, distracts the cells which is doing the function just opposite of synthetic cells. They create this resorptive cells. They distract the cells. So the most common one is osteoclast, which basically they resorb bone and tend to be very large and multinucleated, but can also be small and mononuclear. So these multinucleated osteoclast are formed by fusion of precursor cells similar to circulating monocytes. The part of plasma membrane lying adjacent which is uh, being resorbed is raised in characteristic folds. So if you can see the folds over here, the folds. So this is known as ruffled or striated border so the part of plasma membrane lying adjacent to bone that is being resorbed is raised in characteristic folds which is known as ruffled or striated border so these are found against the bony surface occupying shallow depression which is known as how ships lacunae so the many short notes will be coming from this one the ruffled or striated border, how ships lacunae, and one more thing we have that is clear zone. So you can see this area which is devoid of all the organelles. So this ruffled border is separated from the rest of plasma membrane by a zone. 
specialized membrane that is closely applied to the bone okay so it is separated from the rest of plasma membrane by a zone of specialized membrane which is very closely applied to the bone and the underlying cytoplasm this is a cytoplasm which tend to be devoid of organelles and that is known as clear zone okay so in osteoclast we have learned what is ruffled or striated water that is this peculiar appearance that plasma which is uh, plasma cells plasma membrane which is close to the bone and it is being resorbed which gives that because resorption will not happen in a linear fashion it will be uh, folding uh, foldable uh, fashion it happens and this uh, seen in a particular depression that's this osteoclast seen in particular depression known as how ships lacune and there will be a clear zone which is a cytoplasm which is devoid of organelles whereas a cementoclast cementoclast the peculiar thing about cementoclast they does not remodel okay so these cementoclasts are not usually found in the periodontal ligament because it doesn't remodel so these cells seen when there is pathological conditions or during resorption of deciduous teeth and when regressive forces are applied because we uh, forcefully apply uh, forces that um, the forces are being applied on orthodontic therapy so in orthodontic therapy we apply forces that is intentional forces in that cases we can see cementoclast so these cementoclasts resemble osteoclast and are located in depression and cementum resembling how ships lack on it okay so this is not usually seen in periodontal ligament it comes when there is a pathological problem uh, resorption of deciduous bone and the orthodontic forces and one more thing these cells not only just resorb cementum but also they can destroy destroy dentin and enamel so this is also known as odontoclast so odonto means tooth so clast is something which is uh, destructing structure so this is also known as odontoclast because it destruct enamel and dentin now we have our third category so we finished fibroclast is nothing but cells which destruct fib fibers or collagen so osteoblast creates bone fibroblast creates collagen cementoblast create cementum osteoclast destruct bone and fibroclast destruct collagen cementoclast destruct cementum now we are moving on to our third cell which is progenitor cell so progenitor cell is uh, all connective tissue including pdl which contains progenitor cells that have the capacity to undergo mitotic division so mitosis is the basic basis of replication of cells so these are undifferentiated mesenchymal cells that have a perivascular location within uh, around 5 micrometers of blood vessels so when stimulated appropriately these cell undergo mitosis and what are the cells will be formed so we may have fibroblast osteoblast or cementoblast that in turn produces collagen bone and cementum so progenitor cells are the cells which produces osteoblast fibroblast and cementoblast okay so this should be here progenitor as a primitive cells that itself give rise to osteoblast fibroblast cementoblast okay so that is the synthetic cell of synthetic cell we can say and we have epithelial rest of molasses we already discussed it there will be epithelial root sheath that is hardwick's epithelial root sheath which undergo uh lysis and there will be epithelial rest of molasses because it loses its continuity and the epithelial rest will be seen along the root surface as network strands or islands or tubule like structures which will be parallel to the surface of root which has around 25 micrometer in diameter so their function is not yet clear but they could be involved in periodontal repair and regeneration so it is most numerous in apical and cervical areas children it is very numerous as we age uh, the number reduces these cells may proliferate to form cysts and tumors and one more thing we have 
the cells that the epithelial rest of cells undergo calcification to become cementicles okay so what all we learned we learned ruffled or striated border how ships lack on a clear zone odontoclast and cementicles these all are short notes so osteoclast osteoplast fibroblast fibroclast progenitor cell epithelial rest of molasses hardwick's epithelial root sheath cementicles all will be asked for short notes so this is a very common essay periodontal ligament so we have not done so we are into our cells now we go to the defense cells so defense cells are common defense cells we have mast cell eosinophil and macrophages now we need to study the extracellular substances so we had seen the basic structure the basic origin uh, origin and its shape after that we move to the structural cell structural cell we have uh, structure in uh, we have cells and extracellular proteins we finished uh, cells now we have extracellular substances now let's see the extracellular substances so extracellular substances we have fibers and ground substances in fibers we have collagen elastic reticular secondary fibers oxytalin fibers and also in different fiber plexus so the collagen fibers are the main fibers which is uh, the basic types are type 1 and type 3 the 70 percentage belongs to type 1 and it is uh, uniformly distributed in the ligament whereas the type 3 which accounts for around 20 percentage found in periphery of sharpie's fibers and type 4 and type 7 which are associated with epithelial cell rest and blood vessels so type 13 which is associated with pdl when the ligament is completely functional and uh, the collagen is gathered to form bundles and approximately 5 micrometer diameter and these bundles are termed as principal fibers so principal fibers are very important uh, the next video i'll be doing the principal fibers so the within each collagen bundle the subunits are present which is known as collagen fibrils okay so fibrils combine to form fibers now we have uh, the turnover rate of collagen this is uh, faster than all other connective tissue collagen present in the connective tissue because it is highestly seen in periodontal ligament the turnover of collagen and the rate appears to be highest towards the uh, root apex and the collagen on both side has slower turnover rate than that on the bone side when it shows where it shows higher turnover rate so towards the bone side it has having higher turnover rate and now we are moving on to ground substances principal fibers will be dealt in next video the major glycosaminoglycans are chondroitin sulfate dermatin sulfate heparin sulfate hyaluronic acid and keratin sulfate so glycoproteins glycoproteins we have various type fibronectin these glycoproteins are densely uh, packed proteins with extracellular matrix and they have been localized in the calcified sections of human periodontal ligament the most common is fibronectin it promotes attachment of cells to substratum especially to collagen it is expressed strongly along attachment sites of pdl collagen fibers to cementum but not bone in addition to its function it is also having functions such as blood coagulation wound healing and chemotaxis so it promotes cell addition to collagen it is associated with collagen fibers to cementum next we have tenacin it is also known as cytotactin it it is a other glycoprotein identified in the periodontal ligament it is found mostly in healing wounds unlike fibronectin it is not uh, uniformly distributed throughout the pdl but is concentrated between the less densely packed collagen fibers near cementum and alveolar bone so laminin is a glycoprotein component of basement membrane 
of epithelial cell trust of molasses which has properties like cell addition, migration and differentiation. So these are the basic um, extracellular substances uh, which are glycosaminoglycans, we have many types and also the glycoproteins. Now let's move on to the principal fibers of periodontal ligament.